the Bay Hill Premier Cup is on the go in the Mother City. The East Weekend Football Extravaganza has helped unearth professional players in South Africa. For more on this story, we're now joined by Ian Says Justin Ford, live from Erica Park. A very good evening to you, Justin. The Easter Weekend is often a very good time for sporting events like this one. How has the turnout been? Yeah, absolutely. Good evening to you, Nandi. Um, Erica Park, Balha here in Cape Town. Absolutely a buzz of activity. The tournament started on Wednesday uh, and it runs all the way to Monday. We, in actual fact, the finals will be played at Athlone Stadium, the iconic Athlone Stadium. But, you know, just the amount of teams, um, supporters that have come out here, a total of 32 teams um, grouped over eight different groups uh, will be part of the, the actual tournament and like I said um, you know 32 teams based from local teams um, here in the Cape Town area Western Cape area as well as the likes of Sundowns sending their under 19 team um, down here to Cape Town Super Sport United Turks have got representation here as well Highlands Park um, Cape Town City have a team, Stellenbosch FC, Hellenic FC, um, but the host, Bayil United at the moment, playing one of the two international teams from Namibia. So Athletic FC, represented here as well as Vintuk Gym Gymnasium. But I'm joined by the uh, tournament director, Ray Rayan Ali, who just wants to talk to us about, you know, just the history of the tournament, Rayan. We understand that it's steeped in history. Um, the likes of Benny McCarthy, seven stars in his early days back in Mitchell's Plain at the Stephen Regan um, facility where it all began for him really. But again, this tournament itself, really the bedrock for what is hopefully a future for football within, um, the, or at least for these players. Yeah, like you alluded to earlier, um, the tournament did start in Mitchell's Plain way back in 1989. Um, but I think we kind of outgrew that venue back then and in the early 2000s we moved to Erika Park. Uh, which is arguably the best venue for for the Bale Premier Cup. You can see it's enclosed. There's a stand. Um, supporters are, uh, can easily roam around from field to field. And there's a there's a nice gears here, family gears. People come and picnic. And I'm, I mean, former days they used to come in prior. Um, we don't do that anymore because of restrictions. But the tournament definitely has produced some some good superstars. Benny McCarthy, obviously the most famous one, is with Manchester United at the moment, and we are all very proud of his achievements. Tulani Serrero, Nasif Morris, Lance Davids, who's here now. Um, we've got the likes here of Ricardo Katza, and the list goes on and on and on. But this is essentially where their future started. Um, I mean, I've, uh, we registered for this year 47 scouts. Um, there was the restrictions on scouts, and I'll speak to you guys about the restriction on numbers. So we just restricted the numbers a little bit. But there's 47 scouts registered here from all over the world. Um, and people are flying down because they want to come and pick up the cream of the crop in South Africa. And that speaks, it bodes well for, for South African football in general. David Nyati is here. Um, uh, who else? Um, Duncan Crowe is here, Desmond Crowe is here. Everybody who's everybody that needs football players, um, talking about top-class, high-performance football players are here today. And I think that in itself speaks volumes, but putting together an event of this nature must take a lot of work and a lot of partnerships with various stakeholders, sponsorships. The city of Cape Town, we know you get it, have gotten involved. That must be tough on you, knowing you have to please everybody. We know um, South Africa is a football-loving country, Everybody has an opinion about certain things, and I mean, how's that process been for you guys? It's been a grueling process, to be honest with you, and I have to accolade and thank the city of Cape Town, um, as well as the Department of Cultural Affairs and Sports. Um, I'm talking about from governmental institutions for, for their support and the way they've shown up um, this year at our tournament. Um, they've both increased um, their sponsorship value towards the event, and then obviously we get support from Vodacom, uh, we've got Vecchio on board um, that supplies everybody with their clothing brands. We've got this team, Rilex IT, who's actually a team, sorry, who's actually a team from, that was born out of this tournament, and they look after all the stats and data and everything that you see online. So that company now sponsors the event. So it's not only just about growing the football players, but also growing the referees and growing businesses and entrepreneurship. Um, and we've got suitable focus that's involved in the event, and you saw score energy drinks there yeah, as well. Um, so everybody chipped in and played their part. Um, but to answer your question, it is difficult to please everybody. Um, and maybe I should open up this conversation about um, the new Sassari grading. So the city's pushing hard to, to grade all the facilities. And what the Sassari certificate says is um, 
Do you have like uh, wheelchair access? Is it is the facility safe? Um, and w what they've done now with this, with the with the grading, with the certification, is that um, there's actually a reduction on numbers for the Erika Park venue. So in the past, we would have seen. And sorry, somebody United just scored. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we would have seen the Score likes of maybe 15. six to eight thousand people in coming to this venue. Now all of a sudden we we restricted to four thousand, but. The participation of the event is already at 800 participants. And then we still have 265 working staff. So already a thousand of, of, the, of the restricted numbers is gone just for us to host the event. And then the rest goes to supporters. Um, so I think there's been a lot of buzz online, social media. You know, you, you, you have the detractors, um, uh, people that are not necessarily for the tournament for whatever the reasons are. And they're pushing the agenda of um, bail wanting to make money and a whole lot of other things and, and I think I speak to how tournament football runs generally in South Africa and in, in, in the Western Cape is that most clubs run tournaments as charities to raise funds for their, for their clubs or their organizations. This unfortunately or fortunately for us has become an event over the years because of the sponsorship input and, and all our stakeholders. So we run as an event. So what we're doing now is we're positioning ourselves as a premium event. Um, and, and this is why all these changes have occurred. Yeah. And I hear you and just the hope that with moving towards a premier event that you can attract international clubs, European clubs, you know, the English Premier League club that also have youth teams to, to hopefully join you in the future. Rayan Ali, I've got to thank you for your time. And the hope is that, you know, the action is enjoyed on the field and that really is the focus to never mind what everybody else has to say because I think these boys, these young boys really want to see a future in football, Nandi, and I think that is what is paramount when we witness, um, you know, the action here at the Bay Hill Premier Cup. Absolutely, Justin. A very important event, particularly when we look at football development here in South Africa. It still is a little bit of a problem, so a very, very great uh, event. Kudos to them. That's Ian says Justin Ford live from the Bay Hill Premier Cup in Cape Town. All right, that's all your sports news for the moment. Anli, it's all yours.